Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd habati fi Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you. Forgive us and forgive you. Continue on in our study of Aqidah wa Tawheed. <clears throat> uh, we reached the portion of the compilation where the Shaykh was uh, mentioning a philosophy before the revelation. So he's mentioning that this is the tariqah of, he's mentioning now some of the ways that some of the groups, especially ahl kalam and we mentioned some of those groups like the Maturidiyah, the Asha'ira, uh, and some of the other earlier sects like the Mu'tazila and the Jahamiya, how they deviated and what some of their asul is. So he says, philosophy before re revelation. And this is in fact a big part of the usul of a lot of those groups is that they begin to, <clears throat> that they give precedence to their own inferences and sometimes speculation in intellect over the divine text. <clears throat> and so as for the Muftidiya, he says, and they are those who negate the sifat of Allah, and this is especially with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah, Isa wa Jal. <clears throat> they learnt philosophy, logic, and intellectual reasons before their learning of the book and the sunnah, and this is why they fell into negating the sifat of Allah. I heard him say the word al hakamiya is an innovated word. It is originally from the Orientalist, and some people have contrived it from them. So here he's just talking about some of these terminologies that they, <clears throat> they don't have their origin uh, necessarily in the book and the sunnah. And these concepts, interjecting them in the categories of Tawheed and so on and so forth, that these uh, concepts that they often <clears throat> are in accord, you know, they have a political, um, they are backed by a political ideology. They are kind of pushed forward in the deen because of the current political context, you know, and the issue of not ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and all of these other concepts. And this forces some of those groups of innovation to <clears throat> elevate those principles into where they even make them as important usul over other usul or integrating them with the categories of Tawheed or what have you. And again, all this comes from speculations instead of the precedents from the Salaf of this Ummah. <clears throat> so he says, the next Aqidah of the Salaf in Africa. He says, if Ibn Tumarat was mentioned, the Shaykh would say he was an oppressor and tyrant. And once he said he is a false man, the Shaykh would say about him that he was the one who took away the Aqidah of the Salaf and prohibited it in Africa and replaced it with the Aqidah of Asha'ida Ash instead. And Africa was upon the Aqidah of the Salaf of Sa Saleh before Tum Tumarat. Uh, so these are some interesting concept this sheikh is, is talking about other debates which are kind of outside of the scope of uh but this is a part of the compilation here <clears throat> i think we're going to skip some of the uh principles here because they have a little bit less relevance for us you know this is not like a uh just an akita book but this is some of the sheikh statements so i want us to derive maximum benefit so we're going to go to talk where he's talking about minor shirk so he says, regarding minor shirk, there are very few people who do not fall into it. And this is why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam taught us a dua, which we supplicate, which is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu a'lamu. Which means, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from committing shirk. Uh, knowingly and unknowingly, and I seek refuge uh, knowingly or unknowingly. <clears throat> and he said that this is an important dua to memorize, which no doubt it is, because this dua is a way of seeking forgiveness from shirk and seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from committing shirk. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruk alam. He said also from these usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, so all of these are just things listed in the, in his, uh, you know, from his Aqidah. 
You know, this is a compilation based upon that. He says, praying for the Muslim ruler. Ibn Taymiyyah said in uh, Al-Majmur, Fatawa, uh, indeed, Imam Ahmed would make dua for Ma'mun and pray behind him, even though Ma'mun oppressed him. So this is something uh, <clears throat> which is so important. It's an important uh, precept of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And you'll find it codified in the books of the Salaf. But more importantly, you'll find it strongly in the Quran and the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, وَأَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَعْتِيُوا الرُّسُولُ وَأُولَى الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرْتُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, uh, Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, <coughs> and obey those in authority over you. Uh, the scholars mention about that, one of the things the scholars mention <coughs> is. One of the things the scholars mention uh, about this ayah is that. Just a minute here. Can you hear something here? So, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <coughs> in that. In that ayah, وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُوا رُسُولُ وَأُولُوا الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <clears throat> obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger. And the scholars mention that that is ta'a uh, mutlaq. That when it comes to, obedient to Allah subhan- obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that is unrestricted uh, obedience. And to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's unrestricted obedience. Obedience. There's no debate about it. You, when you hear an ayat in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you don't debate that. You don't say, "Well, you know, I don't know if I really want to practice that. I don't think it's really correct." Or, you know, there's no, there's total obedience to that because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the Creator and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is appointed uh, for us to follow His example on how to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, the the wuul al emri minkum. And those charged in authority of you. So the Muslim rulers, that their ta'a is uh, muqayyid. It's restricted. So that means it's not, it's restricted to what? It's restricted to their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the leader is a fasik, the leader is a wicked sinner, they oppress people, they're harming people, imprisoning people, uh, institutionalizing all kind of un-Islamic practices, that means you don't obey them in those practices. It does not negate the fact that you still have to obey them in righteousness and the good things they do. So that's a very different understanding. That's the understanding of Ahl, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So it's very important, and we'll find, uh, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Sami wa Maria Muslim fi ma yuhibu wa qariya ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin fi idha umira bi ma'asiyatin fa la sama wa la ta'a." Hearing and obeying the Muslim ruler, and that which you love and that which you hate. As long as he doesn't call you to ma'asiyatillah. And if he calls you to the ma'asiyatillah, fala sam'a wa la ta'a, then there's no hearing and obeying. Uh, there's so many nasus. And again, that's another lesson, but we've talked about this constantly times in many of our durus. This is the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. A lot of people don't, they go astray in this. They may have in general the aqid of Ahl Sunnah, but they just don't, they have a problem with accepting from the rulers. And they love to make takfir of the rulers, or they love to cause doubt about the rulers. And it's just, it's unfortunate. And that's the way people can go astray. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and preserve us, guide the Muslims everywhere to be on Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Faham al Salaf. And until our next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.